Here are the headlines for today. We begin with the story that actually just broke hours ago. The officer who shot Jacob Blake will not face charges. The Kenosha County District Attorney Michael Gravely made the announcement. And you may remember the officer's name is Rustin Shesky. He was the white officer who shot Blake seven times. And today, today D.A. Gravely said the officer shot Blake four times in the back and three times in the side. Shesky was responding to a domestic incident on August 23rd when he shot Blake. Blake was 29 years old and he survived the shooting, but he is now paralyzed from the waist down. And part of Gravely's two hour announcement, he said, it is my decision now that no Kenosha law enforcement officer will be charged with any criminal offense based on the facts and laws. Uh, Gravely also called it a tragedy, first and foremost, for Jacob Blake, but says the question was essentially whether the officer had a reasonable belief that he was in danger of being stabbed by Blake or whether someone else was in imminent danger. Mm -hmm. He said that Blake admitted to having a blade on him. So he said that the chatter around Blake not having a weapon was refuted by Blake's own conversations with right. investigators. And he said that um, this was... <laughs> This case was about self-defense. That's what he said. There, there's a lot of interesting things. He said Blake disobeyed commands and there were three attempts to tase him mm -hmm. before the shooting. If you watched any of the press conference, and Romy, we were talking about this. There was a black man you saw. His name is Noble Ray. He yes. is the former Madison police chief. The DOJ actually chose him to review the investigation. And so Ray said part of the issue was that the officers couldn't let Blake leave with kids in the car because they weren't sure that those kids were his kids. And the D actually said that officers weren't sure if he was going to drive off and end up in a high speed chase with kids in the car. So much interesting. I just want to leave you all with a, a point from New York Times columnist Charles Blow, just another side of this. He wrote, the system will never work for us. It is not designed to protect us from it, but to protect itself from accountability when it hates us. So lots of different points being made in all different directions here. Several. What do you think? And when I saw Noble Ray, to me, there was nothing noble about what he was saying. Mm. And I'll tell you why. You don't want him to give away in the car with kids. There's four tires you could have shot out, right? You mm. could have continued to tase this young man if that was the case. There were several officers on hand. There was no threat. If you had to shoot him, you could have shot him in the leg. There's so many different ways this could have played out where this man could, one, still be walking, right? Mm. All right? Thank God he's still alive. But when I heard the, the press conference, I was so taken back and upset about it. Yeah. I really was. I was like, this, this is not good. Again. Yeah. It's just really sad that the, our country has a terrible track record at prosecuting white cops for killing black people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, I just wonder, how does not. this cop sleep at night knowing this high profile um uh, this high profile case how can you sleep at night i just i wish that someone could ask him that question and he's had how a bad pass we know yeah. that this cop has had a bad pass before yeah. we move on though, i want to let melissa jump in really quick no i was just saying like it's it's just it's part and parcel with the statements that are always released by law enforcement. You know, they use the same language over and over and over again. You know, he was acting aggressive and, you know, uh, it's always a justification as to why they unloaded a clip into his back, yeah. you know. But the reality of the situation is when I watch the tape, when I think when everybody watches the tape, we don't see him acting in a combative or no. aggressive manner. He's trying to get away from them. Absolutely. You know, so I don't know. Th this just boggled my mind, this decision. Yeah. Right, we're going to move on to our next story. The Michigan state legislature has passed a set of laws that will significantly reshape the state's probation and parole system. SB 1048, SB 1050, and SB 1051 were all championed by Meek Mill and Jay-Z's criminal justice reform organization, Reform Alliance. The new laws will reduce adult felony probation sentences in Michigan from five years to three years. They'll also prevent endless extensions on misdemeanor and felony probation terms, limit jail sanctions for technical probation violations, and require parole supervision terms to be tailored to a person's individual risk and needs. Michigan had the sixth highest rate of probation supervision in the country, but now that Governor Gretchen Whitmer signed the bills into law, experts say Michigan will likely decrease the state's overall caseloads by 8.4%. Reform CEO Van Jones says this partisan legislation will bring meaningful change and opportunity to thousands of individuals and families across the state of Michigan. We thank Governor Whitmer for her fearless commitment and leadership to bolstering her state's criminal justice system in a fair and balanced way. We look forward to continuing to work with her on impactful reform measures in the future. Speaking of reform, in total, Whitmer actually signed more than three dozen bills into law affecting the criminal justice system. Yeah. 
I want to talk about another one of the bills that I think is interesting because, you know, to a lot of people out there, it may seem small until you actually get to thinking about how much this affects people. She signed a bill that will end driver's license suspensions for violations unrelated to safe driving. So essentially, people were having their license automatically revoked, suspended for not showing up to court or not paying fees. And of course, that creates an almost unbeatable cycle because when you can't pay a fee, so you lose your license, so now you can't drive to work, now you're not making any money and the fees are still piling up. Yeah. There were more than 365,000 license suspensions in the state in 2019. Mm. Whitmer said, our courts and justice system belong to the people. And it seems like these reforms are an effort to do what the people are asking. Yeah, yeah this That's resolution's true. kind of like a long time overdue. Um, originally, a uh, petition to uh, to get it started was back in January, but then with the you know stay at home orders that were issued in March, it was kind of put on an almost indefinite hold. So I'm kind I'm really glad to see that a resolution and came you know came to fruition at this point. Yeah, and it's important to see you know families back together, right? Trying to rebuild their lives. So like I said, we can get past this point. It can help them get back on their feet. Look. This has been a long time coming, and I'm glad that it's happening now, and we need more of this all the way across the country. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. All right. An online petition to have the police criminally charge a white woman who assaulted and racially profiled a black teen on the day after Christmas has surpassed this goal of 100,000 signatures, underscoring the calls for her arrest and prosecution. The petition was started by civil rights attorney Ben Crump. The teenager's father, jazz musician Keon Harold, told TMZ that the incident has prompted a very negative mental reaction on his son. And I, I went to uh, Ben Crumb's page not too long ago. It's over 102, uh, yeah, over 102 supporters of this already. And if you think about what happened on this day, I'm not sure you guys know all the details because we're hearing that she scratched uh, the dad, Mr. Harold. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm pretty much tackled the son. Not pretty mm -hmm. much. And she completely tackled him. Mm -hmm. And then the manager of the hotel sided with yes. her and mm -hmm. she wasn't even there. She wasn't even staying at the hotel. That was, that was the part that was so frustrating for Crazy. me. The benefit of the doubt wasn't given to the child. Absolutely. The protection, the mm -hmm. immediate protection wasn't given to the child. Absolutely. You would think that we universally, be universally believe that children deserve protection. Mm -hmm. And this is something that happens to many black boys. They're seen as older than they are, bigger and more dangerous. Mm -hmm. And in that, just watching, you know, something crazy happening, and but there was a child there, and yeah. seeing the hotel management kind of step in and not defend the child was well, upsetting. You know, to the watch. thing, the, the scary part about this video is that she was very, she really thought that this person had her phone, uh -huh. and so you know. I don't know if you guys found out that earlier her phone was found in the Uber that yeah. she was in earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. And then she also could uh, go to jail for assault, grand larceny, and also attempted robbery. But she was she really thought that this person had her phone. And she also asked everybody in the lobby to empty out their pockets. Like, there was something really wrong with this woman. Yeah. And she also told CNN that she was assaulted. So something is, you know, don't be surprised if she comes in and says, you know, something was wrong and she had, you know, an illness or something she like that. Because something okay, just a little like off. Well, right. Okay. Sure. Has the, has this woman been identified? Like, yes. Do we we know her name? We do know her name. Okay. I did not write it down, but her name is on, All right. online. Well, some outlets are, are Black reporting Twitter. Her name. Go it's, get her. It's weird <laughs> with you know, got to go get her. Black and Twitter has definitely found her. I just need, I sure. just need to I just need her to to suffer some kind of consequence in in all you know actuality, like lose your job, whatever Something. the case is. You know, if there's not going to be any um, you know. Uh, uh, criminal repercussions for this, then you got to lose something because this was, was ridiculous. But Melissa, she still thinks that she's the victim, though, just to let you guys know. She, she does. thinks that she's but the real victim. Quick, I have to point this out. Being a father, I don't want my son to feel like growing up if someone approaches him saying, right. you got to show me proof that's right. not your phone. Mm. You, I, if we can't get to that. I'm not raising my son like that. That's not how right. you're supposed to be. Mm. You can't just give in to this situation because if we do, this is going to be an ongoing problem. You're right. Romeo, right. what do you tell your son to do in that situation? Uh, well, I tell you, since I find someone that's in charge, if dad is not there, he's He's going to be with an adult. Go with that adult. Stand by them. And you say, hey, you know what? You need to talk to them. Mm. Don't talk to my chick, my kid like that. You can't do it. Mm. Right. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Well, speaking of an ongoing situation, the NAACP is calling on the Fulton County District Attorney to investigate President Donald Trump's weekend call to Brad Raffensperger when he asked the top election official in Georgia to find him 11,780 votes for him to overturn the state's election results. 
In Georgia, black voters were critical to the success of the Biden campaign, and NAACP president and CEO Derek Johnson said that the president's calling on election officials to quote-unquote find votes is the latest stunt, along with a series of lawsuits filed by the Trump administration targeting African-American voters. This is a racist attack on black voters. President Donald Trump's desperate and futile attempts to invalidate and falsify votes cast by Georgia voters add to a growing list of criminal acts that must be addressed. His blatant disregard of the election's accurate results is harmful to the American people and democracy itself, Johnson said. He is a loser, Johnson added. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please put that in all caps. He is a loser and cannot accept the fact that he lost. Okay, first of all, that just tickled me. It's really funny. Secondly, <laughs> I think that Derek Johnson is going to find a friend in um, in uh, newly elected district attorney Fannie Willis. She is uh, quoted as saying, like many Americans, I have found the news reports about president, uh, the president's phone call with Georgia Secretary of State disturbing. As I promised Fulton County voters last year as district attorney, I will enforce the law without fear or favor. Anyone who commits a felony violation of Georgia law in my jurisdiction will be held accountable. Hmm. Once the investigation is complete, this matter, like all matters, will be handled by our, our, our office based on the facts and the law. I like her, and I am excited to watch this debacle unfold. It's just, been interesting. No, no, go ahead, bro. It's just been interesting to watch elected politicians in the state say that only part of the elections are faulty. Like, we have an issue with the elections, but not, but only if we lose. Yes. Uh, last yeah. night, Kelly Leffler announced that she will object to the Electoral College vote, and today she was dodging questions about this call. This is important. You're running for, uh, up, you're, you're up for election. Yes. Th and you're, this is about the election process in the state where you're asking voters to come out and vote for you. Uh, newly elected Rep. Marjorie Taylor Greene actually said the state election should be decertified. But then she was asked, well, what you just won as part of those same elections. And, and she's she like, like, no, 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 but mine was right, fine. Only, I'm only talking about the presidential election. We're only talking about the presidential election. How does that make sense to the yeah. voters None there? Whatsoever. None whatsoever. None. I'm just really happy, Brooke. That's a really great point. I'm really happy that Derek Johnson and the NAACP are speaking out about this because we all know that black people came out in record numbers in Georgia. And this is a, this is a racist, I feel like this is a racist attack towards black people because like you said, it's only a problem if you lose. And, and just to, for Trump to use mafia words in a conversation like mm. schmuck and dead as a doornail. Who does God think he is, man? <laughs> like, that's always wild. Come He's on, hilarious. Man. And you know what? Derek Johnson's right. He is a loser. Her. Oh, Take that L, bro. Can we, Take it. That? Can we do that? I'm sorry. All right. Now, on the same topic of Georgia, Georgia voters are set to decide the balance of power in Congress in a pair of high stakes Senate runoff elections that will help determine President elect Joe Biden's capacity to enact what may be the most progressive governing agenda in generations. Democrats must win both of the state's Senate elections to gain the Senate majority. In that scenario, the Senate would be equally divided 50 50 with Vice President elect Kamala Harris serving as the tiebreaker for the Democrats. Now, Democrats already secured a narrow House majority and the White House during November's general election. Welcome back to The Black Report, your daily source for black news, views, and opinions. Entertainment industry unions are calling for in-person productions to be halted as coronavirus cases rise and hospital beds across California reach maximum capacity. SAG-AFTRA, which represents nearly 160,000 members who work in radio, television, and film, released a statement on Sunday along with the Joint Policy Committee, LLC, which represents advertisers, asking for a hold on the production of television shows and films in Southern California due to the pandemic. Southern California hospitals are facing a crisis the likes of which we have never seen before, Gabrielle Carteris, the president of SAG-AFTRA, said in a statement. Patients are dying in ambulances, waiting for treatment because hospital emergency rooms are overwhelmed. This is not a safe environment for in-person production right now. The groups want a pause in production until more hospital beds become available. A Wisconsin pharmacist who was convinced the world was crashing down told police that he tried to ruin hundreds of doses of coronavirus vaccines because he believed the shots would mutate people's DNA, according to court documents released on Monday. Police in Grafton, about 20 miles north of Milwaukee, arrested advocate Aurora Health pharmacist Stephen Brandenburg last week following an investigation into the 57 spoiled vials of the Moderna vaccine, which officials say contained enough doses to treat more than 500 people. Charges are currently pending. Now, he formed this belief that they were unsafe. Ozaki County District Attorney Adam Garal said during a virtual hearing. Now, he added that Brandenburg 
was upset because he and his wife were divorcing and an Aurora employee said that Brandenburg had even taken a gun to work twice. England is entering a third national lockdown that will last at least six weeks as authorities struggle to stem a surge in COVID-19 infections that threatens to overwhelm hospitals around the UK. Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced a tough new stay-at-home order for England that takes effect at midnight today and won't be reviewed until at least mid-February. Few in England expect any relief until after the traditional late February school break. Scott Landers leader Nicola Sturgeon also imposed a lockdown there that began Tuesday. Northern Ireland and Wales had already imposed tough measures, though rules vary. Johnson and Sturgeon said the restrictions were needed to protect the hard-pressed National Health Service as a new, more contagious virus of coronavirus sweeps across Britain on Monday. Hospitals in England were treating over 26,000 COVID-19 patients, 40 percent more than during the first peak in mid-April. South Africa and Zimbabwe have reimposed restrictions to try to curb the spread of the new coronavirus. According to the Associated Press, January started with record new confirmed cases and deaths in the countries. Last week, South Africa's leaders banned all sales of liquor, closed restaurants, banned public gatherings, closed most public beaches and imposed a nighttime curfew. Official numbers released this morning show the country of 60 million surpassed a total of more than 30,000 confirmed deaths. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa is expected to call an emergency meeting of the National Coronavirus Command Council this week. Now, South Africa doesn't have any vaccines yet. Health Minister Dr. Zweli Mkize has said the government plans to inoculate 67 percent of the population with hospital workers and vulnerable vaccinated first. That's expected to start in April when the country receives vaccines from the COVAX facility. All right. Now, taking it to our YouTube soulmates, you guys are just absolutely on fire today. And that's actually a comment. Someone said we're on fire. So thank you. Uh, so be it one says this pharmacist is the reason why I'm hesitant to take the vaccine. He, th he thought that he wasn't going to get caught. But what about the ones who don't get caught? Hmm, that's a great one. Now, Kim Johnson says, now that's what I'm talking about. We are not going to give up the pressure. Stay engaged. I love it. Now